Chapter 311, Cooperation from Both Sides After the group of traffickers locked the door and left, little Shitu, who had mixed in the crowd in a low-key manner, stood up and went to the place that Sun Ye Oyang was being hung. He lifted his arms and supported the soles of his feet. This caused the pressure on Sun Ye Oyang's arms to decrease significantly. He lowered his head to look at the scrawny young boy under his feet. He was around six to seven years old and had a small stature, yet he worked so hard to support him that his face had turned completely red. Sun Ye Oyang felt very moved, and said to him, Thank you. You won't be able to support me so don't waste your energy. If you succeeded in prying open the window, it would benefit everyone. If you failed, you would be the only one who gets punished. It's too unfair. It's all right, I'll do what I can. I believe that someone will come save us soon. Let's endure this together. Little Shitu's body had been nourished with mystic stone water for two years, so even though he had a short stature, he was stronger than most children. After wiping his mucus and tears, the chubby boy also got up and went to little Shitu's side. He gave him a big thumbs up and said, You are both amazing, and I, Liu Xiu, admires righteous people the most. I'll help you, too. He was half a head taller than little Shitu, so he didn't need to raise his hands high to touch Sun Ye Oyang's feet. He took one of Sun Ye Oyang's feet from little Shitu's hands and placed it on his own head. With one hand holding Sun Ye Oyang's feet, he rubbed his grumbling stomach with his other hand, sighing, if I'm full, I can support him alone, I'm really hungry right now, so I feel flustered and my legs are shaky, seeing that there were people helping him, the coward, who betrayed Sun Ye Oyang, cried in a low voice, he caused everyone to go hungry, yet you guys are still helping him, aren't you afraid of angering those people and getting beaten up along with him, little shitter saw that the others all looked at the coward with disdain, so he fanned the flames and said, had you not acted panicky, how would the bad guys notice? If you didn't sell him out, the window would have probably been pried open by now and everyone would have escaped. It's all your fault, you ruined it for everyone. The slightly older girl spat at the coward and said, Wang Xionian, you coward who can't accomplish anything yet, spoils the good things. Do you know after tonight? We will be sold to some unknown place. You ruined our last chance to escape. Why don't you go die? The others all showed an angry expression upon hearing this. No one knew who initiated it. But over a dozen boys rushed forward and started beating the coward. The fellow let out an earth shattering scream in hope that someone would come save him. While Wang Xionian shrieked endlessly, Little Shitu and the chubby boy notified Sun Ye Oyang before they swiftly let go of his feet and squatted in a corner. Monkey, who was next door, heard the commotion and went over impatiently to check on the situation. Seeing Wang Xionian being surrounded, he gloated and said, Pay attention when fighting and don't kill him, otherwise, I won't spare you guys. He left after saying that. Wang Xionian thought that those people would help him since he gained merit for exposing the escape plan. He hadn't expected that the other party didn't even bother to look at him. He could only hold his head and howl in despair as he endured the beating of the group. The chubby boy and little Shitta continued to support Sun Ye Oyang's weight. Seeing that little Shitta and the chubby boy's foreheads were covered with sweat, Two taller boys quickly came to take over their place. Children still had relatively simple and lovely hearts, so they could still maintain a kind and righteous side in difficult times. From time to time, little Shitu would turn his head to listen to the movement, and constantly glanced at the gap between the door. After the guys next door filled their stomachs and took a short break, most of them went out to look for prey again. Only two to three people stayed behind to guard them. Among the people who stayed behind was Monkey. He said to the other two people, with the door locked, the brats won't be able to come out anyways. It's so hard to stand out here on such a cold day. Why don't we, brothers, go gamble next door? There was no way that the other two would disagree. An hour later, the three men were too busy gambling to notice that a little black wolf dog coming in from a dog hole in the thicket, and it was followed by a small white puppy. The two little fellows crept to the room where the goods were locked, and carefully squeezed through the gap between the door. Little black, little white. You guys finally came. Seeing that little black had brought little white with him, 
little Shitter knew that they were going to be saved. He was very confident in his second sister. As long as his second sister knew about this, she would definitely be able to rescue them. Sun Ye Oyang, who was hung on the beam, was delighted to see the two puppies. He whispered, Yu Fan, are they your dogs? Quickly tear off a piece of cloth and write a message for your dog to send out. Based on my observation earlier, there are at least 15 to 16 people in this group, and they are all vicious outlaws. Tell your family to report the crime to the Yemen and bring more bailiffs over. No. The Yemen should be on vacation now. Ask your family to go to the Tanjin garrison and look for Commander Sunday. Just tell him that his son got kidnapped and ask him to bring his soldiers to save people. Hearing this, little Shitter looked at him in surprise and said, Sun Ye Oyang, so you're the commander's son ah? Why didn't you bring more bodyguards when going out? Sun Ye Oyang smiled bitterly and said, who would have thought that shopping would bring such a disaster? It's hard to buy for knowledge even if one has money. Ah, little shitter took out a handkerchief from his chest pocket, looked at his finger, and then bit on it mercilessly. Beside him, the chubby boy reminded him, Are you dumb? You're not using other people's readily available blood, and using your own. Looking in the direction that his mouth gestured at, he saw that Wang Xionian's nose was bleeding for a long time after being beaten. When little shitter walked over, the coward hugged his head with fright and shouted, Don't hit me, I don't dare, I don't dare to do it again. Little shitter suppressed his disgust and dipped his finger in the fellow's blood. He thought over Sun Ye Oyang's words, and then wrote it down on the handkerchief. After that, he tied the handkerchief around Little White's neck. In his heart, Little White was more reliable than Little Black. Little White was somewhat averse to the smell of blood but it understood the importance of the matter. It bared its teeth and endured it. Little White communicated with Little Black and decided to have Little Black guard the thicket while it went back. It carried the life-saving handkerchief outside and returned to Xiaokao and Xiolian, who were waiting close by. Xiaokao saw it and said to Xiolian, take Little White and find eldest brother. After that, split up to go to the Yemen and the garrison. Tell them to quickly send men over to save those poor children. Xiolian nodded and worriedly asked, What about you? Yuxiakao replied, I'll guard here in case those traffickers notice and take them to another place. Xiolian looked at her worriedly and said, Why don't I wait here, and you go find eldest brother? Stop wasting time. Just do as I say and quickly go find help. The firmness within Yuxiakao's eyes was unshakable. Yuxiolian knew that it was useless to say anything else, so she followed Little White to find her eldest brother. Under Little White's guidance, Xiolian soon reunited with Yu Hang and explained the situation to him. Yu Hang told Xiolian to report the case to the Yemen, while he went to send the message to Commander Sun's residence in Tangatown. He knew that he was unfamiliar with the direction to the garrison and he also didn't have any transportation. It was better to inform the Sun family and let them think of a solution. At this time, Commander Sun's family was already in a disorder. Madam Sun nearly fainted when she found out that her only son had disappeared. However, she was indeed the commander's wife. She stayed calm in this critical situation and immediately sent someone to the garrison to tell her husband about the situation. Tangatown was less than 10 kilometers away from the garrison and it would only take an hour for a fast steed to travel to and fro. By the time Yu Hang arrived at the Sun Estate, Commander Sun was getting ready to take a team of soldiers to search for his beloved son on the streets. Things also went relatively smoothly on Yu Xiolian's side. Due to Royal Prince Yang, County Magistrate Zhao paid special attention to the Yu family. As soon as he heard that someone from Dongshan Village's Yu family reported a case, he summoned her in without delay. After Xiolian told him about the case, County Magistrate Zai immediately became serious. Children had been disappearing from Tanga Town year after year, but there were especially more cases this year. There were over 20 children, and thus, this was a very serious matter. He immediately gathered all the bailiffs in the Yemen and asked Xiolian to lead the way. He had to personally lead the bailiffs to catch those atrocious human traffickers. At a location some distance away from the alley, Yuxiakao blocked the two groups who came to save people, Magistrate Zhao, Commander Sun. In my younger brother's message, he stated that there were currently three people guarding there and the rest had gone out. With the commotion that you guys made earlier, 
some of the criminals must have noticed. If you want to get rid of all the outlaws, we must plan thoroughly with the resourceful commander son here. They quickly came up with a detailed plan to arrest the criminals. First, he told county magistrates how to aimlessly patrol the streets with the bailiffs, and he would search for his missing son with his men. In this way, the traffickers would think that the authorities hadn't found their hideout. When the criminals let down their guard and all returned to the place that the children were kept, they would catch them all at once. However, there was a very important role in this plan. They needed a child to pretend to be abducted and secretly check whether all the traffickers had returned. While the children were being transferred, the child had to signal the officers and soldiers, who were lying in ambush outside. At that time, the criminal would be caught in the act and have no other choice but to be arrested. But, it wasn't completely safe for the child who acted as an undercover agent. If the outlaws were driven to act in desperation, they would very likely hurt the child. After speaking, Commander Sun turned his gaze to Xia Kao and her sister. Yu Hang hastily stepped forward and said, I'll go. I'm a boy, and I have the ability to protect myself in danger. Commander Sun looked at him and shook his head, saying, your age and physique will cause the criminals to be on guard. To be able to complete this task more successfully, it must be someone who the criminals wouldn't feel threatened by. Yuxia Kao took a deep breath and said, Eldest brother, I'll go. Younger sister, I'm a fast runner and I'm also stronger than you. I'll go. Yuxiolian was eager to protect her younger sister and didn't care about the danger. She very actively expressed her will to be the spy. Yuxia Kao looked at her solemnly and said to Commander Sun, It's decided, I'll go. Chapter 312 undercover. Commander Sun was very satisfied with Xia Kao's weak appearance. He said, okay, compared with this little girl, you are less likely to arouse the suspicion of the traffickers. Rest assured, I will have the archers hide in ambush on top of the houses nearby. We will prioritize the safety of you and the children, and do our best to ensure that you won't get hurt. But, you should also know that scene would become chaotic at that time and that the swords don't have eyes. If you're afraid, you can choose not to go. No, I'll go. My younger brother is still waiting for me to save him. Yuxia Kao recalled the blood stain on the handkerchief. If her younger brother was injured, she had mystic stone water in her hands that could give her younger brother and the children timely treatment. Commander Sun revealed an admiring expression and nodded, Women are indeed not inferior to men. Such a good child. After making all the arrangements, Commander Sun led a group of soldiers and anxiously searched round in the market. The child traffickers, who were hidden in the dark, observed their movements. Boss, I heard that the young master of the commander's family is lost, so Commander Sun is personally searching for him with his men. As for the people from the Yemen, a child was reported missing. Knowing this, the county magistrate sent the bailiffs out to patrol. Old Fifth entered a dark alleyway where Boss Yin was waiting with an unconscious child. Touching the big mole on his face, Boss Yin said to Old Fifth, tell the brothers to act according to the circumstances. If things don't work out, then return to the base camp first. There's already a lot of goods, so there's no need to take the risk. Old Fifth replied in assent, probed his head out to look outside the alley, and then walked into the crowd with his hands clasped together as if nothing happened. Commander Sun took his subordinates and shuttled through the market several times. After that, he had the soldiers split into groups and quietly hid near the rundown house that the children were locked in. They hid on the roofs and waited for his orders. Father, Mother Yuxia Kao cried out as she walked slowly on the remote street, weeping. She was playing the role of a child who got separated from her parents. Today, she wore a semi-new cotton garment made of ordinary fabric. There weren't any patches on her clothes, and she appeared clean and refreshing. When parents took their children to the market, they usually took out their best clothes and put them on. In the eyes of the traffickers, she was a child from a family with decent living conditions in the village. They brought their child to play in the town but she ended up getting lost in the crowd. How could the trafficker give up on such a good opportunity? She was soon targeted by one of the traffickers. The trafficker had a fair and refined appearance, and he was dressed in a long robe. If he didn't have a shifty gaze and an evil glint flashing through his eyes from time to time, he looked just like a student from an academy. 
He walked in front of Yuxia Cow with a warm and gentle smile, and softly said, Little girl, did you get separated from your family? Yuxia Cow blinked her eyes, which had turned red from her rubbing, and sniffed her nose. She glanced at him with a slightly timid gaze, and then lowered her head again. She nodded hastily and replied in a low voice, Okay. The refined looking trafficker said, which village is your family from? I'll see if any of my classmates came from the same village. Don't be scared. I'm not a bad person. I'm a student from Kingfing Academy. The school break just started today, so I came to buy New Year goods. Yuxia Kao feigned a relaxed expression and named a village that was about 30 to 40 kilometers away from town. She lifted her small face and said, Our village's older brother Lele is a student of Kingfing Academy. Do you know him? Of course I know him. Seeing that his prey had been hooked, the trafficker quickly said, It's great that you know someone in our academy. Lele plans on going back tomorrow. Why don't you come to the academy with me, and he can take you along when he goes back tomorrow. What do you think? But I need to find my parents. Yuxiaka wiped the corner of her eyes with a handkerchief that was soaked in ginger juice. With tears flowing down her face unceasingly, she cried very pitifully. The only doubt within the trafficker's heart was also dispelled, and he inwardly rejoiced at his luck. He feigned a concerned expression and said, There's so many people on the street. You might not be able to find your parents even if you search until nightfall. Why don't we go get your older brother Lele and go search for your parents with you, okay? Yuxia Kao nodded reluctantly. The trafficker led the way in front, and from time to time, he would turn his head to say a few words of comfort to her. Gradually, there were fewer and fewer people, and the streets were becoming more and more remote. Yuxia Kao pretended to notice that there was something wrong, and asked with slight panic, You where are you taking me? This doesn't look like the way to the academy. The trafficker forced out a slight smile and said, The academy is where students study, so it's naturally not located within the bustling market. We'll reach King Fing Academy soon. Do you see that alleyway? It's inside that alleyway. Yuxia Kao shook her head and wanted to go back as she said, When we came out, my father told me that I can't follow a stranger, especially to a place with little people. Big brother, I'll wait for you here while you go get older brother Lele. Seeing that they weren't very far from the base camp and there wasn't anyone in sight, the trafficker revealed a ferocious expression and sneered, Now, there's nothing you can do. Come with me obediently or else don't say that I didn't warn you. With eyes full of fear, Yuxia Kao's complexion was pale and she was about to run away. She was blocked by the trafficker after only running a few steps. He impatiently grabbed her arm, and then covered Yuxia Kao's mouth and nose with a dirty handkerchief. Be careful, there's chloroform on the handkerchief, the little divine stone warned her in her mind. Just as the handkerchief covered her nose, Yuxia Kao held her breath, relaxed her body and slowly fell down. Fortunately, the trafficker was holding her arm, so she didn't fall on the ground. To refuse a toast only to be forced to drink as a forfeit. The trafficker looked around, lifted his prey onto his shoulder, and swiftly entered the nearby alley. Most of the alleyways in Tanga Town were connected. After making seven or eight turns, he soon reached the base camp where the children were locked. After he carefully knocked a secret signal on the door, and the door quickly opened from within. Monkey was the one who opened the door. After letting the refined looking trafficker in, he looked behind him again. Seeing that nothing was wrong, he carefully closed the door again. Scholar, good going. You brought another back. You got a total of four goods today, which is the most among the brothers. When you receive the payment, remember to treat us, brothers, to a drink. Ah. Monkey laughed as he patted the refined looking trafficker's shoulder enviously. Scholar chuckled and said, rest assured, the quality of the goods is pretty good this time, so they should be able to sell for a good price. At that time, I will treat you guys to a feast at Zenxiu restaurant. Valiant. Straightforward. You're indeed a good friend. Monkey walked beside him and said, among the goods, there's a son of an official. It's pretty risky on the streets. So many of the brothers have come back ahead of time. Only you and Boss Yin successfully caught a prey. Scholar also nodded and said, There's enough goods already, so it's better to be more cautious. Boss made the right decision. Little Black, who was hiding in the thicket, almost jumped out. What's going on? Did Master Xiaokao also get kidnapped? What should I do? 
The chain on the door made a loud noise. The child supporting Sun Ye Oyang quickly let go of his feet and squatted in a corner. Monkey opened the door and looked at the huddled children with a frown. He walked in and nudged Wang Xionian, who had been beaten unconscious, with his feet. He angrily shouted at them, who beat him. Come out. You beat him until he looks like a pig's head. How am I supposed to sell him? The children huddled together, and didn't dare to look at him. Monkey was so angry that he gnashed his teeth and pulled a child out, wanting to vent his anger by hitting him. Scholar put Yuxia Cow on the ground and stopped him. We're changing locations tonight. Don't cause unnecessary trouble. Monkey threw the child to the ground, and the child fell down with a pout on his face. He looked very pitiful, as if he wanted to cry but didn't dare to cry. When Monkey and Scholar was about to go out, a timid voice sounded among the children, the one hanging up there is about to die. Scholar looked up and saw Sun Ye Oyang's white and bloodless complexion. His lips were ghastly pale, and he appeared to be unconscious. Thus, he quickly said to Monkey, take him down. He's one of the better quality goods. If something really happens, then we're the ones at a loss. Monkey took out a dagger, which was the one he confiscated from Sun Ye Oyang. He cut the ropes around Sun Ye Oyang's hands, put him down, and got a bowl of water. He said to the children who were huddled together, give him a drink of water. If he dies, I'll make you pay with your life. After saying that, he followed Scholar and walked out of the room. The chubby boy lightly pushed little Shitter with his body and whispered, Go, go take a look at Sun Ye Oyang. He must feel so uncomfortable after hanging up the for so long. Hey, where are you going? Little Shitter crawled on all fours to the young girl, who was quietly lying on the ground, and softly called, Sister? Second sister? He moved away the strands of hair on Yuxia Cow's face and saw her face clearly. He anxiously pushed her and called in a low voice, Second sister, second sister, why are you also abducted here? Second sister, quickly wake up ah. The chubby boy was about to feed Sun Ye Oyang with some water, but when he saw this, he quickly put down the bowl of water and went over to little Shitu. He patted little Shitu's shoulders, and said, Hey, your family is seriously quite unlucky to lose two children at once. Didn't you just say that your second sister will definitely save you? Well, isn't this great? She couldn't save you and ended up getting caught herself. A. Eh? Can we still get out? Seeing that the bad guys had left, Sun Ye Oyang stopped pretending to be unconscious. He comforted little shit too. Don't worry, your second sister is just unconscious due to the drug. She will wake up after a while. Right after he finished talking, Yuxia Cow stopped pretending and sat up from the ground. She calmly looked at twenty or so children of varying ages. She said to little Shitu reassuringly, It's okay. I was afraid that you would be scared, so I purposely got kidnapped to accompany you. Little Shitu became anxious. Second sister, if you're also here, then who will save us? Those bad guys said that they will take us away on a ship and sell us to the south. Yuxia Cow gave him a reassuring expression, looked at Sun Ye Oyang, who was lying on the ground with a face full of cold sweat, and said, there seems to be something wrong with that child. Go feed him some water. Chapter 313 Follow up a victory with hot pursuit. Yuxia Cow took out a little bottle and dripped a drop of mystic stone water into a bowl of water. She said to Sun Ye Oyang, I've studied medicine before, if you trust me, you need to drink this, it will benefit your body. Partly because he was also thirsty, Sun Ye Oyang down the water without hesitation. Yuxia Cow used the last bits of water in the bowl to clean the wound on his wrist. After that, she dripped the mystic stone water on the wound and told little Shitter to tear two pieces of cloth from Sun Ye Oyang's underclothes to bandage the wound. Sun Ye Oyang moved his wrist and gasped in surprise, it doesn't hurt anymore, you're so skillful. Little Shitter proudly replied, of course, do you know whose second sister she is? My second sister is so amazing she even helped treat the royal prince. She made the medicine in the bottle herself and she even knows how to craft pesticide that can kill locusts. Sun Ye Oyang looked at Yuxia Cow in surprise, so the pesticide for locusts were made by your family. During fall, 
We also bought some and managed to cultivate a batch of fall vegetables. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any vegetables to eat this winter. Yuxia Kao told her younger brother to support the fellow so he could sit with his back to the wall, and then whispered, Now is not the time to speak of such things. Commander Sun has already come up with a rescue plan, so all we need to do is to wait for the bad guys to come back to strike. Sun Ye Oyang's face brightened with glee, and he murmured, I got it, you must have intentionally gotten yourself caught to become an inside agent, right? You're amazing, but aren't you afraid? I was quite afraid when I initially got here. However, my father said, the more scared I am, the more I shouldn't express it, and the more I should overcome my fears to calm down, only then will I be able to think of a countermeasure. Too bad my dagger was taken away by the bad guys or else I would have escaped a long time ago. Even if you pried the window open, you wouldn't necessarily be able to escape either. Little Shita slowly analyzed for him, firstly, you're unfamiliar with your surroundings. Even if you got out, you wouldn't know where to run, and it's easy to run into a dead end. Secondly, those child traffickers will definitely have their eyes and ears nearby, you might be discovered the moment you stepped out of here. Hearing his words, Sun Ye Oyang lowered his head and said, Now that I've heard this, I suddenly feel like I'm quite stupid. I've exposed myself too early and caused my dagger to be confiscated. A eh, I've gratuitously suffered for an entire afternoon. The chubby boy squeezed over while they were talking and complained, When are the authorities coming to rescue us? I'm about to die of hunger. Could it be that those bad people want us to faint from hunger so that they would even be able to save on chloroform? The three of them exchanged glances, and then Yuxia Kao sighed. The local authorities probably won't come, I hadn't been able to report to them before I got caught. With a look of despair, the chubby boy exclaimed, what, doesn't this mean that no one is coming to rescue us, we'd be sold into prostitution to sell our butts, what I don't want to, father, mother, the others, who strained their ears to listen in, also anguished when they heard the chubby boy's cries, Yuxia Kao thought, now this is better. Fortunately, the two people before didn't notice, or else all the children here would have been exposed earlier. Why would a group of children, who got kidnapped, not panic or get upset, but were filled with help instead? If she didn't lie and tell them that there was no rescue, the child traffickers would definitely be able to detect the incongruity when they returned. It wasn't known which child started it, but slowly, the cries merged together. The chubby boy cried for a while before turning to Yuxia Kao, big sister. Did you bring anything to eat? My father said, even in death we must be a satisfied ghost. Oh, right, I'm called Lixi. My father runs an armed escort organization in the capital. Nanping village is our hometown, we came back to worship our ancestors. So this little boy's father was a martial artist, no wonder he talked with the righteousness of a hero. Yuxia Kao took out a small bag of jerky and shed among them. The situation could change at any moment she could at least ensure that they would have the energy to react if they ate. One by one, the child traffickers returned as the sky turned dark. Boss Yin did a head count and, after realizing two of his subordinates were missing, he turned his questioning gaze towards the rest of his brothers. Old Fifth's face crumpled, while Boar and Leopard were unlucky. They were discovered just as they took action, and the patrolling bailiff was just nearby, so they got caught red-handed. Boss Yin paused in his movements and his face darkened, turning to address his brothers, we shouldn't stay here for long, let's relocate immediately. Old Fifth worriedly replied, but it has only just turned dark, not to mention we're also bringing children along with us, so we're more likely to attract other people's attention with so many people. The bailiffs on the street haven't even left yet. Boss Yin said to Scholar, go and check if the horse carriage is here. Knock the children out and place them in chests. We'll act as bodyguards escorting cargo. We'll be safe once we're out of the town gates. There's definitely risks, but if we keep waiting, I'm afraid sooner or later Wild Boar will give in to the Yemen's torture and sell us out. Since they already made the decision to relocate, Monkey brought a few of the brothers to chase the group of children out of the room. They shouted and shoved at them as though they were herding goats. There were a total of 28 children, consisting of both boys and girls. Seeing that they would be immediately brought away, 
the unpredictable future and the possibility that they would never be able to see their parents again made the children wail. Monkey was afraid that their wails would alert the neighboring residents, so he strangled one of the children who cried the loudest, menacingly frightening them. Shut up. I will strangle anyone who cries. The child in his hands had already been strangled until his face turned blue and his eyes rolled back. The other children were so afraid that they covered their own mouths, shedding silent tears. Monkey grinned with satisfaction and dropped the child. He couldn't really strangle him to death. A child could sell from ten to a few dozen tls. Boss Yin glanced at him and said, At midnight, a buyer will be waiting nearby the port. Our mission is to bring the goods to the port, so be on high alert. Whether we can get through this year prosperously will depend on this deal. Yuxiakao had already gotten a rough understanding of the number of child traffickers from the children, so she carefully hid among the children and did a head count. Subconsciously, she furrowed her brows when she noticed that scholar, who had caught her, was missing. They had to arrest all of these child traffickers in one attempt or else it would bring danger to her family. However, Boss Yin ran his gaze over his subordinates and ordered, What are you waiting for? Get to work. Monkey and a few other child traffickers used the handkerchiefs in their hands to cover the mouths and noses of a few children nearby, causing them to fall to the ground unconscious. Yuxiakao grew increasingly distressed as the number of unconscious children continued to increase although Scholar still had yet to return. What to do? What to do? If she were to send the signal now, she was afraid that Scholar might be able to escape from arrest. But if she didn't send the signal now, she would be knocked out very quickly. Fortunately, she and little Shita were at the far back of the group of children. The children at the front put up a struggle and disturbed Monkey in his work, which was able to buy her some time. But even then, the number of unconscious children kept increasing, and there were fewer and fewer children who were standing. When there were only six children left, Scholar returned from the outside and said to Boss Yin, We're set. Everything is prepared, we can start loading the cargo. The other child traffickers bent down to pick up the unconscious children and prepared to put them into chests. At this moment, the dirty handkerchief in Monkey's hand moved towards Yuxiakao. Yuxiakao whispered to the children by her side. At the count of three, squat down. One, two, three. At the instance she counted to the number three, Yuxiakao triggered the signal in her hands. It was like a firework that shot up into the sky emitting a sharp whistling noise. Yuxiakao, along with little Shitu, Sun Ye Oyang and little Fatty, who were by her side, immediately squatted down and hugged their heads. Crap! Boss Yin felt that something was wrong and immediately threw aside the child in his hands. He drew out the blade at his waist and blocked a flying arrow that flew in his direction. The others weren't as lucky as him. The first ones to go were Monkey and the four other traffickers, who were walking towards Yuxiakao the other children. Arrows penetrated their chests and warm blood splattered on Yuxiakao and the children's faces. They were still children, after all, so they naturally trembled in fright and their faces paled when they witnessed the death of another person firsthand, especially upon seeing Monkey's bulging eyes. The chubby boy hugged little Shitu and hid his face in the embrace like a frightened quail. The arrows continued to storm, and more and more child traffickers were felled. Boss Yin pulled one of the traffickers from his side to block an arrow headed his way. The arrow shot through his chest, and even until his last breath, he still stared disbelievingly at Boss Yin. The cunning and ruthless Boss Yin, along with Old Fifth and Scholar, retreated into the house. Out of eighteen brothers, only the three of them were left. Old Fifth ran a hand over his face, wiping his face with blood. Boss, what do we do? He shouted in despair, block the door, scholar, see if the alley behind the house is safe. Boss Yin panted, and it was clear that he was filled with fear. Scholar opened the window and carefully peered outside. His face paled visibly as he said, boss, there's an ambush at the back too. It's the people from the Yemen. Boss Yin shut his eyes, and then opened them fiercely. Luckily, I've prepared an escape route. Follow me. At the same time, some of the criminals in the courtyard died from the arrow storm, while the rest surrendered. Commander Sun glanced at his son, then commanded his subordinates to break open the doors to the courtyard. Old Fifth took out a bow from the house, held it in his hand, and said to Boss Yin with fierce determination, Boss, 
you go, I will hold them down, damn it, even if I die, I will drag some of them down with me, Boss Yin looked at him solemnly, and then said, old fifth, I will avenge you, he brought scholar into the inner room and removed the mat on the Kang bed along with a layer of wooden planks, revealing a dark tunnel underneath, Boss Yin entered the tunnel first, and scholar followed suit, chapter 314, capturing all in one go, old fifth blocked the door from behind and shot arrows outside when he got the chance, even the soldiers outside were unable to do anything about it within a short period of time, commander son instructed part of his men to attract the criminal's attention at the front while he led six of his loyal subordinates to the side and entered through a broken window, one of his subordinates fought old fifth while another unlocked the door, allowing the soldiers to flood into the house, the stubborn old fifth was killed on the spot, commander son checked the house and realized that the other two people had gone, it wasn't known when, but Yuxiaka squeezed her way into the house and pointed towards the inner room, there must be an underground tunnel inside, she immediately rushed in, be careful, commander son was so shocked that he was covered in cold sweat, if there was an ambush set up inside, this little girl would die, he rushed after her into the inner room, but there was no one in there, only Yuxia Kao looking for something at a corner, idiot, the Kang bed, the little divine stone reminded, little white also found his way inside and jumped onto the Kang bed, using his little paws to claw at it, Yuxia Kao took the opportunity to shout, there's a problem with the Kang bed, commander son immediately removed the mat and the planks on top of the Kang bed to reveal a dark tunnel, without hesitation, little white rushed into it, and Yuxia Kao wanted to follow, but she was held back by commander son who had a firm grip on her arm, little girl, where did you get your guts, what would you do if there was an ambush set up by the criminals, Commander Sun glared at her, then took the lead by jumping into the tunnel first, Yuxia Kao followed closely behind him into the dark tunnel, a few steps in, Yuxia Kao hit her nose on the jade belt Commander Sun wore around his waist, and the pain made her tear up, Commander Sun lit a flare, then turned around to look at her, sighing, be careful, and follow behind me closely, the two of them moved forward deeper into the tunnel with only the dim light guiding their way, footsteps echoed from behind them, indicating that commander son's subordinates had also followed them into the tunnel, the end of the tunnel was in the next alley, boss yin and scholar were in a hurry, so they didn't even fill back the bricks that were supposed to be covering the ground, the alley connected everywhere, and the two child traffickers were already long gone, so which direction should they pursue, commander son felt so frustrated, a Wu a young howl attracted Yuxia Kao's attention, follow me, she told commander son, then ran towards the source of the howl, resignedly, commander son trailed after her, it wasn't long before Yuxia Kao saw little white's figure, he turned his head to look at his little master before turning to run in another direction, Yuxia Kao, Commander Sun and all of his subordinates followed from behind, in their escape, those two child traffickers had to constantly be on alert to avoid running into the, the bailiffs patrolling on the streets, while also being wary of the soldiers on their tail, they took twists and turns in the alleys, hoping to shake off their pursuers, but they could have never expected that the pursuing soldiers would have the help of a little wolf that was as good as a police dog, so, no matter how they turned, they still could not escape from the fate of being chased down, night fell quietly, it was a moonless night as Tangatown slowly became enveloped in darkness, two dark figures cautiously climbed out of Tangatown through a gap in the town wall, Skull appeared behind him, whispering, big brother, we took so many turns and ran so many circles in town, so we should have lost them, right, furrowing his brows, Boss Yin said, better to be careful, let's go to the port, Skull aside, we've already lost the goods, how are we going to explain ourselves to the buyer, damn it, who could have thought that there was a commander's son among them, this is just too unlucky, boss yin said, there is hope as long as we're alive, we'll follow the merchant's ship to the south and seclude there for some time while we plan our next course of action, you can't run anymore, surrender yourself, commander son and his subordinates surrounded the two people in a circle, and told his vice commander, bring a group of soldiers with you to the docks and arrest everyone involved, Yuxia Kao, seeing that the two child traffickers had already been tightly surrounded, moved into the side of the wall with little white while attentively watching the scene, 
Although the two child traffickers put up a good fight, they were still no match for the soldiers, and were quickly apprehended. Just as Yuxia Cow breathed a sigh of relief, she felt a stranger's presence behind her. Inwardly, she shouted, shoot, but she wasn't able to dodge away before a large hand picked her up from the ground and held a cold knife at her throat. Stop, let go of my boss, or else I'll have her life. The croaky voice from behind Yuxia Cow seemed to strain in the darkness. Damn it. How was there a person who was left out? It must be one of the people who were waiting out of town. Sigh. If she had known earlier, she would not have followed them here, now she had become a burden for them. Yuxia Cow was filled with regret. Commander Sun furrowed his brows, his fierce gaze seemingly piercing in the darkness, put the child down, and I'll let you live or else, free my boss and scholar, or else I'll bring someone down with me even in death. The criminal holding Yuxia Cow decided to burn his bridges, if he died, the child would die together with him. Yuxia Cow really wanted to bravely say don't worry about me. But she wasn't filming a movie. The knife on her throat had a high probability of cutting a major artery, and with the medical level of this time, she'd definitely be dead. Commander Sun tried to divert the criminal's attention in order to find an opportunity to rescue the hostage. You're too ambitious. What made you think one hostage could be exchanged for three lives? There is so much to lose in this deal. Tell you what, if you let the hostage go, I'll let one of you roam free. The man behind Yuxia Cow pondered for a few moments, then said, Boss saved my life, if there was no boss, I would not be here today. Let my boss go. Sanzi touched, Boss Yin looked at the blurry figure standing in the darkness, sniffling. Commander Sun, however, began to negotiate, let your boss go? Sure, but how would I know you will keep to your word once I let him go? Let go of the little girl first, she's innocent. The criminal holding Yuxia Cow laughed coldly, innocent, I doubt it. She must be your accomplice, why else would a little girl appear here in the middle of the night? Stop spouting nonsense and quickly free my boss. Commander Sun took two steps forward and opened his mouth to say something, but the criminal turned the knife towards him and shouted, Stop, or do you not care about her life? Just as he finished speaking, a white figure rushed over and ruthlessly bit the wrist that was holding the knife. The criminal screamed as he let go of the knife, and Yuxia Kao took the opportunity to elbow him in the weak spot in between his legs. The criminal let out a scream that was even more piercing than the first. Commander Sun sped forward and he couldn't help but shed a tear of sympathy for the criminal once he saw clearly what had occurred. The little girl's small, white dog was still biting onto his wrist while his other hand covered his important part. The criminal was in so much pain he curled his body like a prawn and couldn't even stand steadily so he was easily taken into custody by Commander Sunday. Little White, come over here. Seeing that the criminal had already been apprehended, Yuxia Cow backed away to the side and called over Little White that was still fervently holding on to the criminal. The criminal's wrist was so badly injured his hand would definitely be incapacitated. Good job, Little White. Yuxia Cow took out a piece of jerky from her pouch and offered it to Little White as a reward. Little White sniffed at it with his nose, then turned his head away in disdain, as though saying, it's wolf meat, so stinky, I won't eat it. Yuxia Cow remembered that he was very particular, just like his dad who disdained the meat of their own kind. They had never refused the wild boar and hare meat that was slaughtered at home. She was rearing such a group of gluttons that the meat at home was barely enough. Fortunately Big Grey would occasionally go hunting in the mountain and he definitely brought back some game every time so the store of meat at home was still sustainable. Commander Sun gave Little White a thumbs up, Little Miss, where did you get this small, white dog? It's quite wonderful. With a little bit of training, it could be put to great use. Offer me a price, I'll buy the dog off you. I won't sell it to you no matter how much you offer. Yuxia Cow ran her hand through Little White's soft fur, trying to comfort the raging pup that was growling at Commander Sunday. Commander Sun could tell that they were close, but couldn't help himself from teasing them. I'll give you 100 tls, what about it? 100 tls is more than enough for you to buy a few dozen dogs, enough for you to buy even a Pekinjis that comes from the west. Yuxia Cow and Little White headed towards the town gate, 
saying, you're better off keeping your money to buy a Pekinges for your precious son to play with, our little white and little black are from the bloodline of wolves, I won't sell them no matter the price, of course, Commander Sun did not intend to own little white by all means, he brought his subordinates to open the town gate and led the detained criminals to the county Yemen, inside, Yuhai. Yu Hu and a few other children were anxiously awaiting their return, all of a sudden, Little Black ran out of the county Yemen and rushed madly into the dark night, Little Shitty happily exclaimed, it must be second sister coming back. All the people in the county Yemen were suddenly very spirited, county magistrate Zhao, who had been patrolling with his bailiffs for the entire day, was worried when he had initially heard that the second miss of the Yu family had followed the soldiers out. There was no need to even mention the fact that she caught the eye of Royal Prince Yang, it was already enough on his plate if she had gotten hurt simply just by the fact that she was General Zhaoyong's goddaughter. Sigh. Indeed it was like father, like daughter. If the little misses of other families met with this incident, they'd definitely be so scared they hid away. Where would you find one that was like her? someone who would rush to the front, knives and swords had no eyes, if she was hurt, what would he do, all the people of the Yemen breathed a sigh of relief when they saw the small figure trail behind Commander Sunday, Yuhai quickly walked over and hugged his daughter, examining her from head to toe, Ka, are you hurt, let me see, little Shitu sharply noticed that there were fine, red marks on Xiaokao's neck, and he screamed, second sister, you're hurt. His scream made a lot of people worry. County Magistrate Zhao also came down, asking concernedly, where were you hurt? Hurry, let Dr. Sun inspect. Chapter 315, Brave the Snows to Come Back. Because some of the children were injured and others had fallen ill from being frightened, the authorities invited Dr. Sun from Tongren Medicine Hall over. His youngest grandson also came along to help him. Yuxia Kao already knew Dr. Sun's youngest grandson. He was the same child who had stopped Little Black halfway and tried to take the puppy as his own. After recognizing his wrongs, he had sincerely apologized to her. Dr. Sun had already diagnosed and treated the other children. The one who was most heavily injured was the child who had tried to escape and ended up getting beaten up by the slavers. The child had two broken ribs but luckily none of his internal organs were harmed. Commander Sun's son, Sun Ye Oyang, only had some superficial wounds. Because little Shitu and some other loyal kids were there, his injuries were not very serious. When he heard that Yuxia Kao had gotten injured, Dr. Sun hurriedly rushed over with his box full of medicines. All she had was a faint mark on her neck. Dr. Sun didn't know whether he should laugh or cry. Was this also considered a wound? It was just some minor scratches. However, he still very cautiously checked her pulse. When nothing came up, he said, nothing's wrong. As long as you put some wound balm on the wound on your neck, you'll be fine. Do you still have any wound balm that you've may left? Just use that one. Its effect is quite good. The rest of the case progressed very smoothly. This group of evil and vicious criminals had either been killed in action or caught by the authorities. Even the slave buyer at the docks had also been caught red-handed and brought in. Before the end of the year, the shocking case of human trafficking in the Jin prefecture quickly came to an end. The common people in Tanga Town, who were all hunkered down for the winter, quickly found out through word of mouth what had happened. Everyone, especially the families who had gotten their stolen children back, were deeply grateful to the county magistrate and the military official, so they erected long life plaques to them in their homes. None of them knew that a little girl, who had just reached the age of ten, had played the most crucial role in all of this. Yuxia Kao, who had become a female hero, refused the county magistrate's offer of a reward. In her eyes, she only worked hard in order to save her beloved little brother. The people who were truly taking risks were the soldiers under the military official who had chased after the criminals. She also didn't want to cause any future problems for her family. In her mind, she wasn't as brave and selfless as they said, so she didn't want to become famous for this. Thus, she had the county magistrate conceal her participation in all of this. However, Fang Sizen, who was in the distant capital, had somehow learned about this through channels she didn't know about. He braved the winds and snow to rush over from the capital. By the time he got to the Yu family's residence, he had almost become a snowman. As soon as he entered, 
he inspected his adopted daughter from head to toe. Only after he saw no injuries did he let out a sigh of relief. Afterwards, he harshly scolded Yuxiakao, but every single word he said belied how much he worried about her. Yuxiakao poured a cup of ginger sugar water for her godfather and watched as he drank it. She only spoke after he finished. Godfather, it's almost time to celebrate the New Year's. How come you're not spending the holiday with godmother and little brother in the capital and instead came over to Dongshan village? Is there something going on at the harbor? All of the workers at the harbor are off for the New Year's celebrations, so how could there be anything going on? When your godmother heard about your heroic deed, she was very worried about you. If it wasn't for me stopping her, she would have come along too. You are, you. How should I, your godfather, scold you? When other people encounter danger, they all run away to hide, but you, on the other hand, run straight to it. After such a big event, you also didn't send any news to the capital. If it were not for Commander Sun bringing a report to the capital that mentioned your participation, I, your godfather, would still be in the dark. The more Fang's eyes and talked, the more angry he became. His eyes which were as round as gongs, were fixed on his goddaughter with a look that was half full of frustration and half full of love. How could this child be so gutsy ah? Yuxiakao let out a couple of dry laughs. Godfather, aren't I perfectly all right ah? It's time for the New Year's. What's the point of mentioning this and making everyone anxious? You weren't aware of the complex situation at the time. If we let the boss of the criminals escape, I was afraid that he would take revenge on us later. Furthermore, Little White could smell where the criminals went. If I didn't follow him, how could Commander Sun catch all of these bad guys so smoothly? Fang Zizen was going to continue when Ye Hai interjected out of pity for his daughter, who was being scolded to the high heavens. All right. All right, things have already passed, what's the point of talking about it now? You won't be able to make it back to the capital before the New Year's, so just celebrate with us. Yuxiakao also took advantage of this change of subject. Godfather, I haven't seen you in such a long time, yet the first thing you do is scold me. Is it because you have little brother that you don't care about me, your adopted daughter? anymore? Fang Zizen hurriedly placated his daughter's overly sensitive heart and softly said, originally, your godmother and I were planning on coming back after celebrating your little brother's hundred day banquet. But who would have thought that Xilin would get a chronic cough? All of the doctors in the capital saw him yet he still didn't get better. Even the imperial physicians couldn't do anything for him. In the end, it was the Sichuan fritillary bulb with loquat syrup that you concocted that made him better. You didn't know any of this, but prior to that syrup you made, the doctors gave him medicine that was so bitter ah. Xilin screamed every time he had to take medicine and your godmother wept with him. Your medicine is still the best as it's sweet so Xilin likes taking it. Yuxiaka rolled her eyes in her heart as she thought, how could it not be sweet? I added a lot of honey and brown sugar to it. I reckon that little Lin Lin had gotten whooping cough. Sichuan fritillary bulb, loquat, and pears all have the ability to suppress coughing. The most important ingredient in the syrup is still the mystic stone water. Otherwise, how could a medicine that was prescribed without looking at the patient work so well? Fang Zizen continued enthusiastically. Xilin didn't even finish the two bottles of cough suppressant syrup before his illness got better. Afterwards, the eldest prince in the palace had gotten a cold and had a bad cough. He also refused to take medication. So the emperor took the rest of the syrup. It's said that after just a few days of using your syrup, the eldest prince stopped coughing. All of the imperial physicians analyzed your syrup and came up with a recipe. However, when they tried to reproduce it, their syrups were a lot more inferior to yours. A wisp of anxiety rose up within Yuxia Cow's heart. She really didn't want to attract the emperor's attention ah. She wasn't sure when similar cough suppressant syrups appeared in history but if the emperor really ended up pursuing this, she would just say that she came up with the recipe herself. Fang Zizen proceeded with his story, after little Lin Lin got better. It was already the start of winter. Your godmother was afraid that because he was so young, he might get sick again on the road. 
so she decided to come back to Tango Town in the spring. In between, your godmother wrote a letter to you to have you come over to the capital to celebrate the New Year's with us. But you ended up declining. Xiaokao, when are you going to the capital with me? Your godmother and I all want to introduce you to our close friends and family are. Ah, that are let's wait until little Lin Lin celebrates his first birthday. At that time, I'll go to the capital and participate in his birthday grab. 1. Yuxiakao was still a bit wary of the rich and powerful families in the capital. Thus, she always had some hesitation in going to the capital. Fang Zizen thought for a bit and calculated that was less than half a year away, so he nodded in agreement. Then we'll agree on that. Don't try to find another excuse or reason to not go then. Yuxiakao let out a dry chuckle, how could I godfather? You must be hungry. Let me go into the kitchen and make some of your favorite, braised pork knuckle. Fang Zizen hadn't been able to eat the food made by his daughter for half a year. He smacked his lips and said, Okay. I heard that your family is raising a few wild boars. Must be hard in the middle of a disaster year. Yuxiakao smiled. My family didn't really go through that much. We firmly believed in the words of that white bearded immortal. So we harvested everything in the fields well in advance. We had six mew of sweet potatoes that were half grown then and also had some sweet potato seedlings. In addition, we had corn stalks and some wheat husks and such are. We also had locust powder that we made from dried locusts in storage. Using that to feed hogs and chickens makes them grow quite quickly. For the evening meal, Yuxia Kao not only made braised pork knuckle but also stir-fried some grasshopper sauce for Fang Zizen to dry. Fang Zizen really liked the savory and spicy grasshopper sauce. In fact, he devoured five to six flatbreads covered with the grasshopper sauce before he finally took a break to talk. Daughter R. How come you didn't send a few jars of such delicious sauce to the capital? Yuxia Kao replied in surprise. I asked the young royal prince to give you two jars to dry. Did you not get any? I thought that you and godmother didn't like it because it was made with locusts, so I didn't bring it up later. What? You asked royal prince Yang to bring grasshopper sauce to us? How come I didn't hear your godmother mention it ah? Uh? Don't tell me your godmother didn't like it and sent it as a reward to the servants. That can't be right ah, uh? she always tells me right away when you give stuff to us. Fang Zizen was a bit puzzled now. Yuxia Kao silently cursed the young royal prince in her heart and pouted, Godfather, if you both didn't get any, then the young royal prince must have taken it for himself. That guy is really too much. I specifically told him that two jars were for you and the remaining two jars were for him. The culprit, who had taken the grasshopper sauce, that the two were talking about, was currently far away in the capital. Zijun Yang was currently happily eating grasshopper sauce while his lady mother and eldest brother watched him with alarm. Suddenly, his nose itched and he let out an enormous sneeze. He inwardly thought, I'm sure that lass Yuxiakao is talking about me. Did she find out that I took the other two jars of grasshopper sauce? Fuh. What does it matter if she knows? It's only two jars of grasshopper sauce. That lass has so many frozen locusts in the cellar. Why does she care about two jars of grasshopper sauce? Such a miser. Princess Consort Jing endured the feeling of her stomach roiling as she worriedly said, Yanga, is this grasshopper sauce really made with locusts? Will there be any problems with eating it? Zijun Yang spread a thick layer of the savory and spicy grasshopper sauce on a white and soft steamed roll. He took a giant bite and said, Lady Mother, don't worry, I've eaten it countless times while I was in Dongshan village. How could there be problems? This grasshopper sauce is very tasty. Lady mother, eldest brother, are you too sure you don't want to try any? Princess Consort Jing's mind was currently filled with the images of the dreadful locusts. Insects scared her the most, so she hurriedly shook her head. How could I have the nerve to fight for it when I can see that you love it so much? You can keep eating. Zijun Yang hesitated for a bit before he asked Prince Jing, who had a solemn look on his face, Lord Father, do you want to try any? Prince Jing was silently thinking, you little brat, you finally thought of me. I've been sitting here all by myself and I'm not tiny. Did you pretend that I wasn't here earlier? Prince Jing had a very serious demeanor. Even at home he continued to be dignified and imposing. Normally, all of his sons revered him but weren't very intimate with him, especially his youngest son. Ever since his youngest son turned five to six, 
his personality changed a lot and he became irritable and angry. His youngest son even injured people frequently. Prince Jing had a headache on his hands and punished him severely a few times. Thus, his youngest son started to hate him. Usually, his youngest son would avoid him whenever they crossed paths. If Zhejun Yang couldn't avoid Prince Jing, then he would just ignore him. Thus, Zhejun Yang normally only talked to his lady mother and eldest brother at the dining table and ignored Prince Jing's existence. The sun must have risen from the west today since Zhejun Yang voluntarily spoke to his father. 1. Birthday Grab, comma, a custom of placing a variety of articles, writing brush, abacus, etc before an infant on his or her birthday. The first one the baby picks up supposedly reveals his future career, 